In today's video, I'm going to show you how to run payroll with Rippling. I'll walk through getting familiar with your dashboard, using the hiring and offboarding wizards, navigating to payroll, entering employee hours, reviewing and submitting pay runs, running off-cycle payrolls, and even running payroll reports. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Landau, payroll specialist and staff writer for Fit Small Business. Let's get started. Getting familiar with your intuitive employer dashboard. The first thing you'll see when you log in is your to-do list, populated with any time-sensitive action items that are being flagged for your immediate attention. This list will help you to ensure that you're not falling behind and that everything for your employees and your payroll are in order. Once you scroll below your to-do list, you'll see a list of your company apps. These include both internal and external add-ons that your company utilizes, from payroll, time off, and insurance, to Google Workspace, and even LinkedIn. Rippling has the ability to integrate with over 500 third-party softwares that make running your business from one dashboard quick and simple. You can also use the expandable toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen to easily access the most vital parts of your HR and payroll, including HR management, insurance and benefits, IT management, and so much more. Hiring and offboarding wizards. From that expandable toolbar, let's start by taking a look at Rippling's hiring and offboarding wizards. When you click hire, the system will ask you whether you're hiring a previous employee or if you'd like to enter the candidate's details manually. If you click on I'll be hiring a previous employee, you'll then be able to select from the previous employees that have been added to the system. You'll then be asked whether or not that employee is going to be working in the same role or in a new role. And then you'll confirm the first name, the last name, and you'll need to add an email address. Once you've added this preliminary information, you'll click continue on the bottom right hand side and you'll continue to be walked through the wizard to confirm the employee's information and add any new details that are required. This will be a very similar process if you choose the second option. I'll be entering the candidate's details manually. From this screen, you'll enter the first name, the last name, and the employee's email address. And just like the previous, you'll click continue on the bottom right hand side and you will continue filling out all of the employee's information. Next, let's take a look at the offboarding wizard. If you click on offboard, you'll be prompted to search or select for an employee. So you'll just want to start typing the name of the employee that you're looking to offboard. You'll click on their name. You'll then enter what their last day of work is going to be, whether or not you want Rippling to suspend their system access, and at what time that access should be restricted. From there, you'll click continue on the bottom right hand side. And similar to the hiring wizard, you'll be walked through the rest of the prompts in order to successfully offboard the employee from your Rippling system. Running payroll. Now that we reviewed the hiring and offboarding wizards, let's take a look at the payroll screen so we can walk through processing payroll using Rippling. From the expandable toolbar on the left hand side, you'll want to click on payroll and time and then payroll. From here, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the most recent pay run that's open to be run. Now, Rippling has a great feature that allows you to put your payroll on auto approval, which means that there's no need to come in here and take a look at any of the information that's in here because it's able to be auto approved. However, it is being flagged, as you can see here, with a note that's saying that the auto approve is not going to be able to go through because they're missing some information. So when we click on the run payroll screen, we'll be able to look at that issue and also walk through processing payroll in the event that you don't want it to be automatically run for you. So let's go ahead and click on that run payroll button. And the first screen that's going to load for us are our salaried employees. So here we're gonna see the message that there are some critical issues with Sam, which we'll get to in just a second. We're gonna click continue. And like I mentioned, the next thing we're going to see is our salaried employees. So we can scroll down and anybody that's salaried, they're already going to have their salary automatically populated here. So we'll see their name, their salary, any amounts for life insurance, long-term disability, short-term disability, a place where we can add reimbursements. So we can go ahead and scroll down and just kind of give a general overview 
Now, like I said, these employees are salaried, so we don't expect to see a lot of changes here from payroll to payroll, but you never know if you'll have to add a reimbursement or any kind of one-time payments. So we'll continue to scroll down and just make sure that everything is looking good until we get to Sam. So anytime there's an issue with an employee in payroll, you're going to see this caution button, which is a really great tool that we can use to make sure that we're not missing anything. So next to Sam, we're going to go ahead and click it. And we'll see that the reason why Sam is being flagged in this payroll is because there are some missing critical information, including their bank account, um, some tax information, their home address, their social security number. So the system gives us two options. We can either add the details ourselves, but in the event that you don't have the details as the employer, you can also request missing information. So this will personalize a message that's going to be sent via email in order for them to go ahead and fill out that information themselves. You can even add a personalized message here and they'll get an email that prompts them to log into Rippling and fill out all this information on their own. So that's a really great tool here. For, for now, of course, we're just gonna skip through. We're gonna ignore this issue with Sam so we can go through the rest of the payroll process. Now you'll notice here, this is another employee that has a caution button, but this one is for a potential missed clock out. Now, this is a really nice way to check and see that nothing has been missed before you go ahead and push payroll through. So it seems if we go down, we'll see an orange button next to some of the time entries that the system is flagging there may be a potential missed clock out. Now, if you see here, entry exceeds 12 hours. So in this clock out, the person was working for 12 hours and 13 minutes. We have another flagged one here, 14 hours, another flagged one here. So these would be a really helpful way for you to go in and see potentially your employees did forget to clock out and there are some sort of issues here that you need to um, fix before you go ahead and pay for that time. In this case, it looks like this employee has a lot of time entries where they're working, you know, 10, 12, 15 hours. So we're going to go ahead and assume that that is correct and we're just going to leave it as it is. So we'll click out from here and then on the bottom right hand side, we're going to want to click the next button, which is going to bring us to our hourly employees. Similar to the last screen, we only have two of these folks here, but from the time and attendance software, the hours have already been pulled over, their pay rate has already been pulled over. Now, you'll notice these two employees also have these caution buttons for potential missed clockouts. So just like the last screen, you can always click into them, scroll down. The time tracking is going to automatically populate here so that you're able to go ahead and take a look and make sure nothing is looking incorrect. So this is a great example, 14 hours take a look at it. And at that point you can click in and edit it if something needs to be changed. But just like in the previous screen, we're just going to assume that those are accurate um, clock in and clock outs. So once you've you know, decided that everything here looks good, you'll go ahead and you'll click next, which will bring you to the contractor screen. We've only got one contractor here. It's auto populated since it is a recurring payment, um, but you'll also be able to go in here and change it if there's anything that needs to be changed. From here, we'll go ahead and on the bottom right hand side, once again, we'll click preview payroll. This is now going to populate a screen, it'll take a couple of minutes to do so, that we can use to preview all the information that we've loaded in the last couple of screens. So we'll see the total direct deposit amount, the total employee taxes, the total employer taxes, and the total debit that's going to be coming out of the bank account and when to expect that debit to hit. If you scroll down a little bit, we will see that here's the information for Sam. We can still process the payroll, but Sam is not going to be paid. Of course, we know that because Sam's bank information, social security number, the information is not in the system. So we won't be able to process payroll for Sam at this time. Um, we can scroll down. And this is a really great tool, Payroll Changes, that actually compares this payroll to the last payroll. So you're able to see in gross pay whether you're up or down from the last cycle. Um, same for taxes, same for deductions. So it makes it a really helpful way for you just to see, is there anything that looks really crazy as you're scrolling through here? Is someone getting paid hundreds more than they did in prior cycles? And if so, you just want to go ahead and make sure that um, they're meant to, to do so if that is, if that is the case. Um, so you can go through, take a look at any payroll that was unchanged. Just make sure that everything is looking good to you. Um, you also can take a look at the payroll taxes employer taxes. There's a lot of really great features here in this uh, payroll summary that you can use to make sure that everything is looking good. Um, and once everything is looking good, you can go ahead and on the bottom right hand side, click approve, 
Once you click this button, the payroll will be pushed through and there's nothing else that you'll need to do. Processing off-cycle payrolls. Another great feature of Rippling's payroll suite is just how easy it is to process an off-cycle pay run. When you click on the payroll screen, you'll notice on the right-hand side, just above your normal pay runs, a button that says create an off-cycle pay run. Now, this is what you'll want to use anytime you want to process payments outside of your normal pay schedule. So if you go ahead and click on this button, a wizard will open up and will walk you through the process, making it so simple to process off-cycle payrolls. You'll be able to give this payroll a title, so if you're processing bonuses or any off-cycle payments, you can create a title so that it's really easy for you to track in your reporting. You'll then be able to decide who you want to pay. If you want to choose individual employees or contractors, does this only apply to a couple of your employees? Would you like to pay all of your hourly, all of your salaried, all of your contractors? You can choose here exactly who this payroll is going to apply to. As you continue down, you can decide, do you want to specify the net pay or do you want to have um, Rippling calculate the gross pay from the net? Um, so normally you would decide what the gross pay is going to be. That's what you do in your normal pay runs, but they do give you the option to create um, a payroll using the net pay amounts also, and Rippling will gross up that payment for you. As you continue to scroll down, you can decide whether or not you intend to pay them via check or if you're going to be doing some direct deposit. You'll select what the pay date is. Would you like to display a pay period for this run? And as you continue down, it's going to ask you a couple more questions. Do you intend to pay bonuses and commissions? Um, and when you get down to the bottom of this, you'll click on the bottom right-hand side, move on to the next step, and you'll be able to enter the payments um, for your employees as easy as that. So Rippling software makes it really easy to run off-cycle payrolls anytime you want to process payments outside of your normal pay cycle. Running payroll reports. Once you've processed all of your regular payrolls, plus any off-cycle payments that need to be made, it's important that you know how to run reports using Rippling's payroll software. So when you come to your payroll screen, you'll see here along the top-hand side, this menu, the option for reports. So if we go ahead and click in there, we'll see some of the standard reports that are available in the system. For today's example, we're going to go ahead and run a journal report. So once we click into there, the system allows us to configure the report for exactly what we're looking for. So today we're going to pull a monthly report for December of 2021. So once we go ahead and click apply, it's going to take just a couple of seconds to load the information, uh, but the information will be broken down between company, departments, and employees. So whatever is the most valuable way for you to view that information, you'll have the option to do so once the information loads here in Rippling. Um, and now that it's broken down, what's really nice about these reports is even though we pulled it on a monthly basis, Rippling is going to show you these pay runs as they were run in the month of December. So this is the first pay run. You'll see we had a pay run from December 1st to December 15th. You'll see all the totals and everything that you're looking for on a summary basis right here. If we scroll down a little more, we'll see that second pay run that was processed in December of 2021 from the 16th to the 31st. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the report, we're actually going to get the gross totals for all of the runs within that month. So this is a really great way to see both the granular and the overview, depending on what you're looking for. Um, but this can be a really nice way to see if there are any discrepancies in particular that you're looking for throughout that month. This report gives you the option to see it both on a per payroll basis and then see the totals at the bottom. And of course, on the top right hand side, you'll have the option to download these reports in which you can download both as a PDF or as a CSV. Now that we've covered using your employer dashboard, how to navigate the hiring and offboarding wizards, processing payroll and off-cycle payments, and running reports, you're ready to utilize Rippling's HR tools and process payroll for your team. If you want a step-by-step -step instruction guide, check out our link to the How to Do Payroll and HR with Rippling article in our description box below. Thanks for watching.